Uh, my name is Sami Asin. I am here to present Access Map, an application that uses data from uh, OSM, the amazing OSM. Um, a software engineer with a task car center, and I'm presenting the work here on behalf of myself and my colleague uh, Kunal Mehta from Taskar. Um, the Taskar Center for Accessible Technology uh, aims at developing and deploying technologies that will help give people with disabilities autonomy over their lives um, and make their life uh, easier. And this work has been sponsored by the Transportation Data Equity Initiative program and the US uh, ET ITS for us program uh, by US DOT. Accessibility, according to the dictionary, is the quality of being able to be entered or used by everyone, including people who have a disability. Um, Taskar is motivated at to create, thank you, accessible user interfaces as well. Uh, task, uh, can, can I just hold it? There we go. <laughs> it's moving. Um, the Task Car Center is uh, motivated to create accessible user interfaces as well as uh, that help improve the lives of people as well as we've recognized that sidewalk network data is really essential uh, to uh, improving people's quality of life and it's essential to uh, accessible transportation network. You cannot have a complete transportation network without uh, sidewalks and pedestrian pathways. Why is this work important? Um, transportation and mobility play key roles in the struggle for civil rights and equal opportunity. Affordable and reliable transportation allows people access to important opportunities in education, employment, healthcare, housing, and community life. This is really important work, and it boils down to access to opportunity. If we want everybody to have equal access, uh, we, need, we need to uh, be doing this work. Uh, so Access Map is an application that uses OpenStreetMap, the great OpenStreetMap data. Uh, it's uh, a routing uh, software, a trip planning software uh, that has accessibility. It was designed around accessibility in mind. Um, it offers route navigation uh, features, uh, lots of preferences that we will kind of uh, go over uh, to get the optimal route for the user based on their uh, mobility uh, limitations. Um, it's built right now currently on top of Open Sidewalks, which is a sub-schema of OpenStreetMap. It's completely compatible with the tagging and the line geometries of OpenStreetMap. Um, it's been co-designed uh, for non-visual users uh, to improve the auditory navigation that's still slowly being improved, but we're working on improving the screen reader experience for blind and visually impaired users. And uh, we're embracing the multimodal uh, transportation um, perspective. So the idea is not we're not just trying to connect sidewalks and get people from point A to B on sidewalks and crossings, but uh, connect them ultimately to stations and transportation and bus stops, etc. cetera. Uh, this is kind of a deep dive into the interface and the options that you'll see when you load it. By the way, if you want to check it out, it's on accessmap.app. <coughs> uh, the first uh, part you can see at the top, you're able to choose uh, your profile uh, based on your mob mobility limitations. Um, there is a one for wheelchair, power uh, wheelchair, or cane, or you can customize it completely based on uh, your preferences. Um, street avoidance factor, we'll talk about it in the next slide. Um, maximum steepness, uh, this is really important for wheelchair users, uh, how uh, what kind of uphill they can use on a sidewalk using a wheelchair. That's, that could be, could be a very limiting thing for uh, some people. Uh, avoiding barriers also for uh, wheelchair and cane users. Um, do you want to avoid stairs in your route? Do you want to avoid raised curbs? And uh, we started adding additional things like avoiding noise. Uh, for now, it's simply 
uh, avoid main streets, basically highway equal primary for those who know roads. Um, in the future, it could be more. And landmarks distance is for screen reader users and basically uh, think about a cane user who does not really care about a power pole that's three meters away uh, because they can't touch it with their cane, so they wanna limit the landmarks uh, that they're exposed to to say one meter because they can touch it and verify that they are on the right track. Um, access map is incrementally growing. Uh, the more people map, the more complete uh, the routes become. In, in this example, you can see the red portion is actually using a road just to complete the route. Uh, and it, that could be because either there's no mapping in that area, uh, it has not been surveilled, or uh, because there's no pedestrian infrastructure. Uh, some of the features of the application, it's uh, responsive design. So if you load it on your uh, mobile app, a uh, mobile device, hopefully you'll be able to see it, what <laughs> we're seeing on the left side. Uh, it shows an example of a route between two points of interest in Seattle downtown. Um, we added turn by turn directions. So in the example, you see turn right and use a sidewalk. Um, we added street conflation, so we're able to figure out what uh, is the closest adjacent street that the sidewalk resides next to. And that's really helpful. So we can add descriptions like uh, you're crossing so-and-so street, or this sidewalk is east of 18th Avenue in this example. Um, also landmarks. Surprisingly, landmarks are people care about them a lot um, because uh, it's a, for example, the building I use sometimes myself. It's cool to walk around UW campus and know what these buildings that I've walked by a thousand times and always wonder what they are uh, be shown to me. Um, access map and public trans transit. Uh, so this is the multimodal aspect. Um, we also introduced in-station routing. So we have steps within the station, turn-by-turn uh, uh, -turn direction within the station, as you can see in the middle picture at the top. Um, and it's uh, based off the GTFS Pathways data spec, and uh, it's connected to open sidewalks, so it's co a complete graph. Uh, the non-visual experience is a big uh, factor in our design. Uh, this is a picture of Kunal, my teammate, uh, walking around UW campus uh, using the app, testing it. And this is, you can see how important the landmarks. So everybody mapping benches, power poles, uh, you know, all these small things that we're adding to the maps, it's helpful for some people. So keep up the good work. Uh, so if Kunal wanted to rest on the bench, and now applications can actually prompt him and tell him there is a bench on your right side that is six meters away, so you can rest. Um, some of the co-design outputs so far, uh, we added uh, ARIA alerts for real-time turn-by-turn info. We added uh, landmarks, including buildings and other points. Uh, the colors are designed for colorblind users. And uh, we have additional features in the work. Uh, this is where Access Map is present right now. Uh, 13 uh, cities, uh, nine in North America and for in South America, about 7,000 uh, miles of pedestrian pathways. Um, so access is personal. Uh, we saw the profile. It's great to have everybody's limits known for a routing application. And it's definitely not binary. We cannot describe a path as accessible without providing context on who's who it's accessible for. And we need a network to evaluate accessibility. So we need connected edges that's, that are traversable to build that graph. And that's possible by Open Sidewalks, which is a data schema built on top of OSM uh, based on community engagement and discussions. Um, and with people with disabilities in mind. I'm gonna try to be quick. Uh, so this is the huge progress in the last three years in Seattle. So kudos to the community. Uh, the first picture is uh, OSW uh, in Seattle in 2021, and this is a recent picture that I generated, and it's the, the difference is huge. 
Uh, this allows applications like Access Map to actually function. Um, open sidewalks, in a nutshell, we, we have two types of entities. Core entities are traversable, sidewalks, crossings, um, the plazas, and we have, and this is a picture of the ID editor and how it looks like in Access Map once, once it's rendered. And we've had a lot of uh, talks about how to map pedestrian data, so I'm gonna go past that. And the uh, other type of, uh, of entities are extensions, which are things that are outside the graph but are really important to map. Things like benches, fire hydrants, uh, power poles, fences, walls, and buildings, and we'll be adding a lot more extensions that are helpful for pedestrians' navigation. Um, so what this graph allows us to do is uh, create more granular, personalized, accurate uh, data analysis. So without this data, the old way of doing things is you can create what's called on the right side is a walk shed, is how far you can reach um, from a starting point in a certain amount of time. Uh, you generate one for everybody, regardless of their limitations, whether they're wheelchair user, whether uh, you know they're uh, a cane user, etc. Uh, but now uh, agencies and governments are able to create, generate this data for specific people different, uh, with different mobility uh, profiles. And that would help come up with infrastructure decisions for agencies. Uh, things like, um, where should I put these curb ramps? I have this amount of budget. What's the optimal location to improve the graph of the pedestrian? And for individuals, it's great to have uh, know where is the accessible way uh, for uh, from point A to point B, just like any mapping uh, software. Um, we're able with this graph uh, identify bottlenecks for for uh, pedestrians. Uh, we're able to. Uh, do analysis around transportation and bus stops, and um, yeah. So the contribution, obviously, th we have the Open Sidewalks Tasking Manager, uh, which gives you the ability to coordinate the editing of uh, footways and pedestrian uh, features in general. Um, this, the great thing about the Open Sidewalks Task Manager is whenever you start a task, there is a detailed description on the right side that helps you uh, uh, map for the specific uh, OSW schema. Uh, closing the circle, this is really important because uh, as we see here, the majority of car pedestrian deaths happen to those in wheelchairs, often at intersections. And uh, one of the, the second bullet, uh, it says that it represents uh, that a risk of P, uh, is 36 higher than non -wheelch for wheelchair users than non-wheelchair users. And that's why it's the work that the OSM community is doing when it comes to helping people on wheelchairs find a safe path. Uh, that's basically what you mapping a crossing correctly with the wheel ramps um, and the raised curbs, etc., is helping people do. Um, what's come to Access Map? Um, now that we have a foundation schema, um, we will be adding additional uh, data specifications like GTFS for bus stops, and um, we'll be adding additional layers. Uh, there has been, I uh, hear, the new layer of pollution from the EPA that we can add that was recently released. There is a noise uh, map from the BTS. Uh, that we can overlay and basically we can optimize. So this is not only for people with special mobility needs, but if you want to go on a walk and you want to avoid noise, you want to maximum uh, maximize your uh, exposure to green spaces, uh, you can actually have a preference. So this is uh, for all of us, but also with people with special needs and in mind. Um, a quick shout out to TDI, which enables this work. And um, it's a project that um, aims to create uh, data standards, which is open sidewalks, in addition to two more uh, GTFS pathways and GTFS flex, um, improve on these uh, schemas. 
uh, we are creating tools and data infrastructure for download, downloading and sharing the data uh, about pedestrian uh, networks. And we are uh, we're planning on uh, deploying uh, pilots in six areas as a demonstration of the project. I've heard a lot of people talk about the authoritative data in government agencies versus crowdsourcing. So if you have, if you would like to investigate a possible solution that we've implemented, please reach out. Um, so ways to get involved, uh, the OSM pedestrian working group, um, the accessmap.app, please uh, give me any feedback. I appreciate it. Uh, the website for the schema, you can see it on GitHub. And uh, there's a YouTube channel for the TDI, as well as reach out to me. My personal email is on there. If you see a bug or anything with the app, please let me know. Thank you. Do we have time for questions? No? Okay, that's what it was. Please reach out.